Okay, so we have learned a lot about financial maths in the past few videos and uh, now we're actually getting to the really practical stuff, the stuff that's actually going on uh, in the world and that's annuities, okay, annuities. Very few people have actually 120,000 Rand just to invest once off. So what an annuity is, is um, rather than a once off investment, it's a recurring investment. Okay, so instead of of maybe uh, saving 120,000 a uh, once off you rather invest like a thousand rand every month okay so it's a recurring investment so you will often recognize these ones where they say stuff like every whatever okay every month or every not month month okay or every year or every three months okay but this word every is going to indicate for us that this is recurring it is not just happening once it's happening on a regular basis and it's not just earning interest okay it's investing the same amount over and over and over on a certain time period okay so here we go Here's our timeline. We're going to get the formula for the future value. So we want to know how much will a number of investments be worth at the end of a certain time period, okay, in the future. Okay, so let's say that there are n time periods. So if I count them all the way up, okay, and I'm keeping it very theoretical, okay, there's n time periods. This being time zero, time one one time period, two time periods, three all the way up to i and this goes, no not i, i is our interest, let's use k all the way up to time period k and this goes all the way up to time period n okay and I'm standing here in the beginning of my time period okay there I am and here I'm thinking by myself hmm okay I want to make an investment and at the end of this investment, I want to know how much will it be worth. If I start at time one, so at the end of my first month or first year, I'm going to invest a certain amount. Let's call that amount X. Okay. Then I'm going to invest another amount X and another amount all the time the same amount and this goes on after whatever k is let's say k is 20 months after 20 months okay again every month or every year or whatever this time period is I'm going to invest X okay and all the way up to the very last day I'm going to invest my last X okay so how much will this be worth well isn't it just n times X Actually, at this point, it is. Okay, I've just put X away, but I haven't said anything about interest. Okay, so if it wasn't for the fact that my X's will actually earn interest, all I would have had was a number of investments under my pillow or wherever I'm putting this money, and it would just be N investments, so N times X. Okay, but as it were, I might be earning interest or I'm hoping to earn interest. And very important here, I need to work out what is going to be the effective interest rate for every investment. Okay, so every investment has an effect, effective interest rate. So if it's monthly investments, I need to use monthly interest. Okay, very important, it must be effective interest rate. Okay, so let's go and see how am I going to work this out. Well, you recall in just the previous video, we considered how when we have an initial investment and we make deposits during the time period to treat each deposit as a separate investment. Okay, so imagine I'm going to different banks, different investment companies, every X goes to a different bank account. Okay. That means that I've got a whole set of investments and right at the end I just add up all of my investments. Okay, And how much will these investments be worth? Well, let's start with the last one. The last one didn't earn any interest. So if, if my future value is the sum of all these investments, 
then I'll simply calculate the future value of every investment and add it together. Now that sounds like a lot of work and it is, but that's what we're doing. We're trying to get a formula to make the work easy. So my last investment, that X, is only works worth X because it hasn't earned any interest. The one just before that earned one time period interest. Okay, so that one, X, and one time period of interest. So the interest, the effective interest rate on that time period to the power of one. Okay, the second one before that, okay, there was an X there, earned interest for two time periods. Okay, so that one earned interest for two time periods. So interest was added twice. And I'm sure you can see where this is going. Okay, so if I do this all the way for every single one, all the way to there, okay, let's try this one, that X. So I've done all the ones in between. How about this X? Well, that X earned interest not for three time periods. Okay, that's the number of time periods I'm not counting. In total, there are N. So let's imagine N was 20. Then this one would have earned interest for 20 minus 3 because there's a total of 20. But for the first three months, it wasn't invested. So it's only invested for 17 months. So how many interests am I adding? Well, depending on the number of N, okay, minus its position, it's number 3. Okay, it's the third investment. Plus, the one just before him, I think you're probably seeing where this is going, isn't it? Okay, so that one would be n minus 2. And finally, the last one, and I'm running out of space, or not the last one, actually the very first investment. Earned interest, not during the first month because it wasn't invested yet, but only during all of the rest of the month. So it didn't earn it for n because it didn't earn it for the first period, it earned it for n minus one time periods. So let's get there. Okay, so it earned interest for n minus one time periods. Okay, now I wonder if you are recognizing what this is. First of all, we see a bunch of terms that are added together and that should make you think of series. This is a series. Okay. Is it an arithmetic series or is it a geometric series? That's the question because if it is, we have how many terms do we have? Well, we have n terms in total. If we know it's arithmetic, we have a formula for the arithmetic series. If we know it's geometric, we have a formula for the geometric series. So here's my advice. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can figure out is it arithmetic or geometric. I hope you paused the video and that you could figure out it's a geometric se series. Let's see why. Okay, let's take consecutive terms and divide them. Consecutive terms and divide them. Okay, and in both of these cases x cancels x cancels and one of the one plus i's cancel with one of the one plus i's so that I can find that it has a constant ratio. So do you see one plus i? My one plus my interest is my constant ratio. So this would be my constant ratio and my first term would just be x. So that's my first term. Do you recall the formula for the sum of the geometric series? Okay, the sum of the geometric series, a finite sum is my first term, 1 minus rn over 1 minus r. So let's just go and substitute in there. We saw our first term is indeed x. My constant ratio is 1 plus i, so 1 minus 1 plus i to the power of n, 
and all this is being divided by 1 minus 1 plus i. Now this can simplify just a little bit and let me show you what the final product looks like. Okay, so we have x 1 minus 1 plus i to the power of n divided by in the denominator the negative gets distributed so we have 1 minus 1 which is 0 and then the denominator negative i now just so that we can get rid of the negative i in the denominator, denominator let's multiply with a negative 1 numerator and denominator and that gives me my final okay the future value after n investments okay of x x is my recurring investment is and this if I multiply it in okay distribute it makes that one a positive and this one a negative so I'm just going to swap their positions I have 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by and this negative becomes a positive okay there we go this is the future value of a recurring investment so the future value formula for the annuity where fn is the future value of the annuity an annuity of n investments okay n investments very important they are the uh, recurring investments so it's the same amount n investments x is the recurring investment so the value of the recurring payment or investment let's call it recurring amount okay. is the effective interest effective interest remember that's what's actually happening Okay, how much interest is being earned per recurring amount very important if I'm working with monthly investments I must use my monthly interest rate if I'm working with yearly investments I'll use a yearly effective interest rate okay and then um, finally n is not time it is the number of number of recurring amounts okay so how many investments did I make cool and with all that we can go and work out the future value of any annuity so let's look at an example in the next video